Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at how to use our awesome Premiere Pro templates. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. If you've downloaded one of our Premiere Pro templates, then awesome! We really hope that you're enjoying the experience. But if you're here because you're having trouble using it, you're in the right place. We're going to be taking a look at an example together so that you can see how to use your template most effectively. So let's jump right into it together. The first thing that we want to do is locate the Premiere file that comes with the download and double click it. You should have Premiere open up and you should be greeted with a blank template. These templates are designed to be blank so that you can just drag and drop your own materials into place. In our template here, we have very clearly labeled placeholder slots where you can see more or less where the images or videos would go. So to start actually working with our template, let's go to the project manager over here. The first thing you should notice is that you have folders and your folders will likely be very similar if not exact. You should have an edit or media folder a final folder, and an assets folder. Don't worry about either the assets or final folders, we just want to worry about the edit folder for now. Drop it down and you should see that you have another set of folders. Again, yours should be very similar. Logo, which we won't worry about for now, shots, or yours might say media, and titles, or yours might say text. We're going to be focusing on shots and titles. Let's start with titles. Click the drop down and you should see that there's a lot of text files that you can choose from. These are numbered and their number corresponds to when they appear in the project. So we can assume that title one appears first, followed by title two. And if we scrub through here and look for the first piece of text, we can see that it appears here, shortly followed by the next one. So let's open up text number one by double clicking. In this example, what pops up is the old legacy title feature, but what you'll likely have is the new type tool functionality, which means that all you really have to do is just click on the title and type in what you want them to say. If the background is distracting, you can turn it off over here, so you can just see your text. Nice. So let's make our text say motion array. We're halfway there, so let's move on to title number two. Nice. Every time a new piece of text appears, you know that it can be changed by the next title option in the dropdown. But now that you know how to work with text, let's start putting some media into these slots. Go to the shots or media folder and drop it down and you should see something very familiar to the title section. We have all our different media slots numbered the same way. And when you double click on one, you should see that the sequence will either be completely empty or it will have a little placeholder like we do here. To get rid of that, you can either click and delete it, or you can just keep it and then place something else over top of it. It's totally your choice. But now in order to actually place down our own clips and pictures into the sequence, we need to have them inside of Premiere. To do that, either double click on your project manager or just find the files you want on your computer. I prefer to have them already sorted into a folder so that you can just drag and drop them into Premiere. And there we go, now all of our elements are here ready to go. Now let's find one and let's drop it into our sequence. But it's a little bit too big. So let's go to the effect controls section and just resize it. Great, but now in order to actually see what's going on, we need to go back to our final composition. In order to do that, either go back to the render composition here or if you accidentally removed it, Go back to your final folder and then double click the final or render timeline. This will show you your final result. Great, and now we can see that our photo is already integrated into our project and it has life and animation already set to it. It's really easy. Our example here has a lot of slots for media, so I'm gonna quickly fill up all of these so that we can see what it looks like when it's finished. It can seem like a really big task, but what really helps I find is to open up each of these slots in a row and then drag and drop your media onto each of them rapid fire. It can really help to make sure that when you drop these in, you stretch them out to a good length so that they don't cut off during the middle of your template. And there we go, it's all done. 
But what's really nice about these templates is that you can add videos too, and they'll work just as well. So let's take our video here and make sure that it looks good. And let's drop it into place. And now it's perfectly integrated into our template. And guys, that's it. But if you want to take this template and put it inside another video project that you're working on, you can, as long as you're up to date with Premiere Pro CC. Just open up another project that you're working on. And you can copy and paste or drag and drop clips between these projects. So now our template is integrated into another video that I was just working on. But guys, that's it for me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you wanted to check out the template that I used for this video, I've linked it in the description below. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.